we can bring. Because of your love, we're forgiven. Because of your love, our hearts are clean. We lift you up with songs of freedom. Forever we're changed because of your Restoration, God, you hold all things in your hand. We are thankful this morning. Thank you, God, that you are in this place, that you love us, that you gave your son for us. God, there are so many things to be thankful for. There's not enough time or enough ways to even tell you how grateful we are for your love in our life. Thank you, the God, that you've given us a time to worship, a time to um, corporately lift your name. God, I pray that um, as we leave this place today that people will um, see what's changed in us, God, that they will see your light. God, that they will be, want to be a part of a group of people, God, that worship and lift up your name. Help us to be that, that light to the dark world today, Father. We love you. We thank you for being in this place. It's in your son's precious name of Jesus that we pray. All right, who in this place can say they have a testimony? About five of them. What about the rest of them? You think they got one? Uh, you do, but you just don't know it. They don't do know it. Everybody's got a testimony. If you've said yes to that, Michael's got a big one. He's got, he's got two. <laughs> he's got two. If God has saved you, if you've said yes to him, you got a testimony. You have something you can share, something you can take to the world, something that you can tell others about because God has moved you from death to life. And that right there is a huge testimony. So let's just declare that this morning. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power still the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven oh my name belongs to you forever this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story i'll testify by jesus christ the righteous i'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony all right now who thinks they have a testimony of sons and daughters washed in blood and washed in water still the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven oh my name is registered in heaven this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote Things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I 
I'm not dead and you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead and you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Declare today if I'm not dead and you're not done. Greater things are still to come. testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony from death to life cause grace rewrote my story I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Thank you, Father, that you have moved me from death to life. God, if you never did one more thing in my life for me, you saved me. You have guaranteed me a place with you in heaven. God, I am thankful this morning. But you want to do so much more for us. You don't want to stop there. You don't want our lives to stop there. God, help us this morning to just wait here in your presence. God, I pray that hearts and minds this morning will be attuned to you, that they will know that you've got something for them and that they'll be open to you, open to your Holy Spirit to speak to them. So God, as we just come to your presence this morning, we're just waiting on you, Father. Speak to this congregation, God. Speak to each person here. For that one person, God, who's feeling sad, who's feeling alone, who's feeling shut out or let down. God, I pray they will just open their hearts and their minds today and just wait on you. You want to fill those places. You want to fill those empty places, those scars, those hurt hurt places you want to fill them up so we just ask you to do that this morning if faith can move the mountains let the mountains move we come with expectation waiting here for you Waiting here for you.
Control, God. We love you and we worship you. In your son's name, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that worship. We apologize for the technical difficulties. Don't know what's going to work or won't work today, but that's okay. We know that Jesus always works. We know our Father, Heavenly Father, is on. The throne. Amen. As our ushers come, we're going to continue to worship God with tithes and offerings. Uh, our youth just went to uh, Hearts on Fire, and it was $70 per youth. So if you think, I don't know what to give toward, you can give toward our youth to support them. They go and they grow in these spiritual ways at camps and at retreats and these conferences and different things. And that is a wonderful thing that you can invest in in our church. If you like to have technology, it looks like we're going to have to upgrade some of our technology. You might give toward that. There's a lot of ways that you can support us and help us to reach others for Jesus Christ. And we thank you for being faithful in your giving. Join me as I pray for our offering. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that you are sovereign, that you are in control, that you are on the throne and we wait here for you Holy Spirit have your way in us and in this service today God I pray that you would just bless each gift and the giver that we would be obedient that we would return the full tithe to you and the offerings that you lay upon our hearts that we can uh, do everything that you've called us and created us to do as a church here at Severable First so bless this day and help us to honor and to glorify you in all we do in Jesus name we pray amen I guess you have to imagine my transition video today. It is just a prayerful, quiet mountain scenery with, with creeks and with the leaves and with the nature, and there's peaceful music playing. <sighs> Don't you all just feel better now after you got that in your minds? I mean, our focus today is prayer. We thank you for being here today. The prayer of Jabez. Anybody ever heard of Jabez? in the Bible yeah I hope hopefully that you have if you haven't we're going to dig into that today we've 
looked at some different things this month. We've uh, asked a question, are you ready to die? And we've uh, dealt with that. And then we've looked at the 23rd Psalm. And we broke that down verse by verse to try to look at that a little bit differently than what we may be used to reading it. And then today we're going to look at prayer. And we're going to focus upon the prayer of Jabez to begin. And then we're going to branch out a little bit from there. But I pray that we all have a vibrant prayer life. We have a good, good heavenly father. He loves you. He is for you today. He is not against you. I don't care where you've been or what you've done. He is on your side, and he wants us to spend time with him, and prayer is a wonderful way to do that. You know, but before we get started, we've not heard from little Johnny in a while, and it reminds me of a story about little Johnny praying. He was eating in a restaurant for his birthday when he started eating without saying a prayer. His parents turned to him and said, we say a prayer before eating in our house. Johnny replies, yeah, that's in our house, but here the chef knows how to cook. <laughs> that was short. How about another one? Anybody? One person wants it, so you get it. <laughs> there were two men playing golf. At the end of the hole they were on, they could see a funeral procession going by. As the hearse drove by, followed by a few cars, one man knelt down, took off his hat, put it over his heart, and said a prayer. The man next to him said, well, that's the nicest thing I've ever seen a golfer do. The man stood up and said, well, it's the least I could do. I was married to her for 35 years. Ooh. Don't do that, man. That's, that's not right. Don't, don't do that. Empires collapse. We see, we've seen the Roman Empire collapse. We've seen all these other great empires that were mighty. They were powerful. Collapse. Some of them were from military problems. Some of them were just from falling apart from within. And my fear for the United States of America is that we are quickly moving in that direction today. I don't believe that anyone's going to have to fire a shot at the old, good old U.S. of A., unfortunately, because we are so decadent. We are so downtrodden. We are so opposite and turning away from everything that this Bible represents, from everything that God would ask us to do and tell us not to do, it seems like we are running in the opposite direction of what God would have us to do. I believe that we're going to make ancient Rome look pious in comparison before we are finished. So what can we do as Christians? How can we help? I believe that we can pray. Does anyone here believe in the power of prayer? I do. I don't end a sermon without giving an opportunity for people to come forward, for me to pray with them, to agree with them in prayer for whatever need, spiritually, relationally, emotionally, physically, or financially. I believe that our God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, that he still answers prayer. If he's done one miracle in the last 2,000 years, he is still a miracle-working God. Amen. I believe he's done a lot more than one miracle. I've seen him do miracles in my life. So what we should do as Christians is we should be praying for our nation. We should be praying for ourselves. We should be turning back to God. We should be repenting of sin. And the only way to know what the sin is is to be in the Word of God, to let it illuminate our minds, our hearts, to change our minds, our hearts, and our actions. I would love to see us turn back to God as a nation, like we started in the early 1700s. Hundreds. And the Bible has many examples of prayers for us to follow. If you don't have a strong prayer life, if you are a baby believer, if you don't know what to pray, say, Pastor David, I just, you know, after two minutes, I'm done. I don't know what to say. Well, today, hopefully, we'll look in First Chronicles chapter 4, and that will help you get maybe an outline for some things that you can begin to pray. If you ever get confused about prayer, Pray the Word of God, because the Word of God is the will of God. You can never go wrong by praying Scripture. And then the Holy Spirit inside of us will grow us in our ability to pray. First Chronicles 4, 9 through 10, and if you will look at your notes, your bulletin has these in there in the New Living Translation. There was a man named Jabez who was more honorable than any of his brothers, his mother named him Jabez because his birth had been so painful. He was the one who prayed to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and expand my territory. Please be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. 
And God granted him his request. Anybody read the book of Chronicles? All of 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles? It could be some tough slogging, especially in 1 Chronicles, talking about who begat who, who begat who, who begat who, that begat who, and all the begats and the who's and who was who's and this and that gets a little bit tough. But it's interesting. He was very honorable. He was honorable, so honorable that out of 66 books of the Bible, Jabez is mentioned in here in these two verses, and there's a tremendous amount of meat that we can get out of these two verses. He was very honorable. His birth had been very painful. His mother named him Jabez. Basically, you are a pain. You were a pain. Pain, right? Who, who, who would want to be named Jabez today? It's like, sort of like being named a boy named Sue, maybe, or something like that. It, was, it had a stigma with it. But even so, he didn't let his name dictate to him what he was going to be. Because the Bible says in that first verse, he was more honorable than any of his brothers. So although he had come from pain, he was named pain, he knew how to carry himself. He knew how to be the person that he should be, the God-fearing man that talked to God who had a prayer life. He prayed to the God of Israel. Did you pray to the God of Israel, the God of us today? Did you pray to the Father? I pray that you started your day in prayer. Not only did he pray, he asks for specific things. That you would bless me and expand my territory. Be with me in all that I do and keep me from all trouble and pain. Don't let me cause any more pain. That's a pretty good prayer, isn't it? And God granted him his request. Four main requests. Bless me, number one. Number two, expand my territory. Number three, be with me in all that I do. And number four, keep me from trouble and pain. And God granted his request. How many of us here today want to be blessed? Show of hands. Anybody? Yes. I think we all want to be blessed. Bless me indeed. Is that just financial? No. One phone call from your doctor can change that in a hurry. If your physical health has something coming against it, you understand quickly what is most important. And it may not be your finances. It could be your physical health your emotional health, your relational health. What about the expand my territory? Anybody want your territory expanded in here? Some of you are thinking, my house is too big right now. I can't take care of it. I've got enough yard to mow, enough blasted leaves on the ground. Amen. I mean, anybody in East Tennessee here got some trees? I've, I've got that problem and that issue. But to expand his territory means money, financial blessings and resources. Expand his territory. Also land. That's Back in the day, if you had more land, you could have more livestock, you could grow more crops, you could do the things that you needed to do to bring financial blessings into his family. Lord, be with me in all that I do. That's good. That's good. Who, who wants the Lord to be with them in all that you do? Amen? Because when we go out here and we go the wrong direction and we run from God... A lot of times he'll leave us behind. We get out from underneath that umbrella of protection and we get away from him. He's not with us. That's not a good thing, is it, as a Christian? We don't want to be, and not that you can ever leave the presence of God. I know Romans 8, he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us. But a lot of times we try, don't we, to get away. The Holy Spirit isn't dwelt in us for the day of redemption. But still, we, we get stubborn. We, we want to do what we want to do. But if you keep in the right priorities with God, you can keep God right there and keep him as the focus. And to be kept from all trouble and pain. Anybody ever have any trouble and pain in life? Anybody in the front row? Probably not. Y'all are too young, but, you know, first couple of rows here, you got some young folks. I hate to tell you guys it's coming. It's not if, but when. You're going to have trouble and you're going to have pain in these old earth suits. And he'll be with us. He can comfort us even in our dying moments. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. I had to encourage a gentleman this week, 96-year-old World War II vet, was in the ICU, and he was tired. He was ready to go home, and I got to hold his hand, and I got to pray with him, and I got to encourage him. Part of the greatest generation 
You know, we're losing, we're losing those folks that fought in World War II. But he was done. He had fought a good fight. His body was tired, and he was ready to go be with Jesus Christ. So this prayer, if you don't have a prayer, if you don't have a model prayer to pray, this is a good one to pray. When I was a younger adult and I learned about this prayer, I think I read a book by Randy Alcorn on this prayer, and uh, it started opening my eyes to this, and I started praying a form of this prayer every day. I was sort of a baby believer, didn't have a good prayer life going on, but it got me started where I have now grown beyond this prayer. I rarely ever pray this form of this prayer, and I have my own form that I journal and I pray. I pray for family. I pray for you all. I pray for other pastors and churches in our community. I pray for our nation. I pray for our leaders. I pray for a lot of different things that may be upon my heart or may be upon your heart or upon your loved one's health. Seems like I've had a lot of hospital visits this week and a lot of folks that are hurting, that are, that are sick, that need that prayer. So if you've not done that, I encourage you, why not start with this? Why not start with the prayer of Jabez? Use this type of an outline to get you going. And then maybe that two minutes of prayer will turn into 10 minutes of prayer, turn into 20 minutes of prayer. And then the next thing you know, maybe you can tarry for an hour with him. And some of you just blew your mind. You're like, an hour? How can I pray for an hour? It's easy. Once you start spending that time with God, you want to spend that time with God. So my question for you today is your number one point. What is your prayer life with, with God? What is it? Is it good? I pray that you have one, number one. I pray that you, as a Christian, quote unquote, if you call yourself a follower and a disciple of Jesus Christ, that you have a relationship, a personal relationship with Christ that you spend time with him. You can't have a relationship and have a good relationship with someone that you do not spend time with. Do you have a dedicated place? Do you have a method? Do you have a way? Do you have a circle of people that you pray for? I mean, there's a lot of things that you can sit there and you can pray and you can focus upon with God. And we can also be quiet and be still and know that I'm God. We can listen. That's something we could be better at, probably. I know that I could be. I could be quieter. I could listen. When I seek God and I ask questions, I try to be quiet. I try to hear for scripture, for verses, for things to confirm in me what I believe he's asking me to do. Those things are important. To pray for our church, to pray for our nation, to pray for our leaders. There's one that's uh, even a little more popular, I think, than the prayer of Jabez, 2 Chronicles 7, 14. I'm sure many of you have heard this verse. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land. Anyone ever heard or prayed that one? That's a good one. It's definitely needed. Your second point, Christians should humble themselves, pray, and seek God's face and repent. We sort of need to start with who? Us. Some people were talking about in years past praying for revival and this old pastor or evangelist whatever said to draw a circle around your feet and then step in and start right there. Start with yourself. Repent. Pray. Turn from your wicked ways. Seek God's face. Seek his hand. Seek his word. You can never go wrong with the word of God and turn from our wicked ways. Now, you are probably fine Methodists. None of you have any wicked ways. So therefore, I'm going to ask you, please pray for me because I have not arrived yet. Amen. That you guys don't really need to pray for yourselves. You don't need to repent or turn from your wicked ways. Pray for Pastor David. Amen. Will you all do that? Raise your hand if you will pray for me to turn from my wicked ways. And I will, I will pray for any of you that might possibly have. I know it would be hard to believe that any of you would have any sin in your life. We all have sin. We have those issues that come after us, right? You, you better know what your weaknesses are because they can and will destroy you if you don't know what they are, if you don't crucify them daily. If you don't know what sin is, it's clearly listed in the instruction manual, guys. No men in the room, we tend to not want to read it. 66 books, 
You can do it. I promise you, you can do it. Sit down, start in Genesis or start in John, wherever you want to go, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, and just read it. Just do it. Know what God says. Know what is truth. Don't distrust me. Don't distrust Pastor Jeff or Daniel when he's in here preaching. Know the word of God. Know what the truth is. The truth will set you free. Pray, seek God's face, and repent, obeying the word of God. Whether you agree with it or disagree with it, obey it. We seek that perfection. John Wesley would ask all of us to move toward perfection as Methodists. Jesus gave us a great example. You want another model of prayer? I'll give you another way of doing prayer, actually. Not a model yet, but Mark 1.35 before daybreak the next morning, that's early, y'all, before daybreak, that's dark, right? Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. Any of y'all morning people in here? I am not, did not, used to be. I'm getting to be more so. I think it's just because I'm getting older, getting my hair a little bit grayer. I start waking up earlier in the morning. But still, sometimes it's a challenge to get up out of that bed, right? To go grab you a cup of coffee, inspiration, hot tea, whatever it is that you get. And get together with God to spend time in his word to pray and to seek him. Jesus set that example to an isolated place. Did you catch that? He's not with 40 other people. He's not with the family running around and the kids jumping off of the, the countertop, slamming doors. and Got the music and the television and the radio going. Not that they had that back then, but he went somewhere quiet. We desperately need that in our lives today. When was the last time you were somewhere that was just completely silent, that was quiet, no distractions? Find you a place. Find you a prayer closet. Find you somewhere in your home, your apartment, outside your house, in a park, our prayer room, 24-7. You can get in it. If you don't know the code, come, come find me. You can use it. We'd love for you. To go there, it is a quiet, peaceful place. I don't think it was accidental. I believe that Jesus had a plan. He made himself get up to go spend time with the Father. A lot of times I need the alarm. I need the wrist to vibrate with the watch to wake me up because your third point, prayer won't happen by accident. You're not going to accidentally pray today, most likely, unless you have a tragedy, something horrible happens, and God forbid, that, that's okay. We should pray. We should seek God in every circumstance. But how much better is it if you're walking closely with God? How much better is it if you have the word in your mind that you don't have to go, and, oh, I grabbed my Bible. There's, there's a tragedy right now. What, what should I read? Have it. Know it. Have that comfort. Have that weapon to fight back against the enemy, schedule it, plan it, be deliberate about that. It empowers us as Christians to go through our day when we have that prayer life, when we have that time in his word, when you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, not just a fire insurance, not just saying, yeah, I'm going to heaven. That's important. But what are you doing now with the gifts, talents, and abilities that, that God has given us? Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Luke 11, 1 through 4, we all know these verses. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, again, he had a certain place praying. As he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Another great outline. If you don't know how to pray, if you say, I just, I don't get it. I don't know how. Use this. Use the Lord's prayer. Pray his will be done. Honor and glorify him. Lift up and elevate and praise God. That's always a great way to go into God's presence. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Not my will, not your will, but God's will be done. Give me what I need. Help me to get through this day. Give me the strength I need. Give me the wisdom I need. Give me the finances that I need. And forgive me of my sins as I forgive others, right? That's not always easy to forgive those who harm us. 
and keep me from temptation because we know temptation is going to come. And your fourth point, pray for blessing. I believe that God wants to bless you. Any parents, grandparents in the church today? If you're a parent, if you're a grandparent, you want to bless your children. You want to bless your grandchildren. And we have evil hearts and wicked minds. How much better does God in his perfect love for us want to bless and take care of us? Notice needs, not necessarily wants. We don't always get everything we want, but we don't lack. We don't go without. Then Psalm 5, I like this, verses 11 and 12. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love. God blesses us if we follow him, if we serve him, if we are disciples of Jesus Christ. And he will surround us with his shield of love. You can feel his love as a believer. We have protection, especially when we're being obedient. And your fifth point, pray for protection. You never know what the day is going to bring. I know there's been times in my life, especially when I was in law enforcement, and as a younger man, God protected me. He kept me here when there were things that could have happened, that could have taken my life, could have really messed me up physically. We all need that protection daily. You don't know. We have a real adversary. We've read the end of the book. We know what happens to him in the end, but he is after us. He's prowling about. He would love to harm us if he could. God can keep us out of the wrong place at the wrong time. I believe that Romans 8, 28 applies in every area of our lives. All things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Maybe you're disappointed by something that happened to you at your workplace, a promotion that you didn't get. Maybe you're disappointed about a relationship that didn't work out. Maybe you're on a sports team and you didn't get to play and someone else got to start in front of you. And we may not understand it all right now. We may not understand why didn't that happen and why didn't that work out for me, but I believe that God is in control. I believe that he is sovereign. He is on the throne and that we have to trust him in spite of the disappointment that we may feel. We may need to be optimistic. Is this bottle half full or half empty? Hopefully you're seeing it half full. If you're an optimist, right? If you're a pessimist, you said, well, he's about out of water. He's going to be parched up there. Somebody go get Pastor David some water. (laughs) Hopefully we can be optimistic. Hopefully we can have the joy of the Lord of our salvation in us that we will trust that God is Sovereign, he blesses his people. Look at Genesis 26. I love this. Verses 12 and 13. Talking about Isaac. When Isaac planted his crops that year, he harvested a hundred times more grain than he planted, for the Lord blessed him. He became a very rich man, and his wealth continued to grow. If you're wealthy, if you're very rich, I know that we're all blessed in the world's eyes because We're in the United States of America. We can go in here to this kitchen and turn on the water and it comes out of the tap. We're not carrying a bucket five miles down the road to get some good water out of a cow pond. Amen. We're we're not having to do that. We are blessed. We are wealthy. But God grants us his wealth or wealth that we need, Verse or your sixth point, when we should be good stewards of it because everything we have comes from our Heavenly Father above. And we really don't own anything. You're not going to take it with you. We're going to use it for a short amount of time. Even if you live to be 100 years old, that's really quick in eternity. And we're going to leave it behind to somebody else to use it. So don't ever get so arrogant that you think, oh, I've got this and this is mine and that. Really, you're just a steward of it. You're using it until we are laying down these earth suits. Money's a tool. That's all it is anyway. We use it for good or you can use it for evil. It's really up to us. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, many others were blessed by God with wealth in the Bible. And he he did that as as a purpose to keep advancing what he wanted to happen with his people, with his kingdom, eventually with his church. Never lose fact of that. 
the, the side of that, that wealth is a tool and we should use what we've been given wisely. Next to last verses, verses uh, 1 through 3 of Genesis 12. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. And it's an old point. You've probably heard it from me 20 times. You're probably going to hear it from me another 20 times in the next few years. Number seven, obedience to God equals blessing. And another thing, you better bless Israel. There's a whole lot of people cursing Israel right now. You better not get on that bandwagon. Young people, you better learn this. They're pushing all these things in school. They're talking about Palestine. It's not Palestine's land. It, God gave this land to Israel. These were his people first. We're grafted into the vine through Christ Jesus. We're part of God's people as well, but you better bless them because whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. Whoever curses Israel will be cursed. Hamas is demonic. There's nothing good about those, those terrorists. The poor people in Gaza, yeah, they're being ruled by terrorists. That's, that's the people that are suffering. The people being attacked is Israel. Don't get caught up in the wrong line of thinking. Bless Israel and be blessed. In your last verse today, Ephesians 3.20, thinking about what can God do through us. If we will model ourselves in prayer, if we will seek God, if we will spend time, if we will be obedient to his word and to what his spirit guides us to do that lines up with his word. Now all glory to God, Paul writes, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That's pretty good, isn't it? That God can do more, infinitely more, than we can ask or think through us if we'll be willing vessels. If you'll do what the last point, number eight, says today, seek God, and he will do more in and for us than we can ask or think. Pretty good promise. And like I said before, I believe that God still answers prayer. And we're going to wrap this sermon up today, and we're going to give you an opportunity. If you need prayer, if you need salvation, if you need anything at all, in a moment we're going to stand and we're going to sing. We're going to worship God. He still answers prayer. If you've got a burden, a physical, relational, emotional, spiritual, financial, whatever it may be, if you need someone to agree in prayer with you, I'd love to pray with you. If you just want to come to this altar, it's open. You don't have to have me involved in that process. And you may think, why should I go to an altar? That's sort of old-fashioned. You don't know what God is going to do when you step out in faith. It may not even be about you. It may be about somebody else that needs to see you walk and come kneel at an altar and humble yourself. And that may give them the courage to do the same thing. I'm going to ask every head to be bowed and every eye to be closed this morning. The sermon's been about prayer. Just be honest with God. Do you have a prayer time with him? Should you be more disciplined or begin to be disciplined regarding this? What about your stewardship of everything he's giving you, that he has given to you? Do you steward the blessings that he pours out on you? Do you trust him? Do you bring the tithe? Do you bring the offerings he lays upon your heart? Do you help others? Because that's the important thing about having an abundance. It's not so that we can have excess. It's so that we have more to be able to help others with. Here around Thanksgiving, is there somebody that you can reach out to, that you could feed, that you could help, that you could bless? Maybe they need just a, a gift card to a grocery store. It would be a tremendous blessing to them, and it's not much to you, but you could do it. Do you need prayer at all for anything in this life? If you do, come as we worship, and I'll pray with you. This altar is going to be open if you need to do business with God. If you need salvation, if you say, Pastor David, I have no idea where I'd spend eternity. Today, you can know that you know. We can pray. I can show you scripture. 
You can confess that Jesus is God. You can believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You can ask forgiveness of sin. Today, you can be made whole. You can be sanctified. You can be justified and start the sanctification process. Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity today that you're sovereign no matter what happens with technology, God, no matter what happens in this world, that we know that you're on the throne, that you have our best interests at heart, that you love us, you want to bless us. You're not against us, you're for us. You're a good, good Father. So Holy Spirit, have your way in our hearts today, in our minds, in our prayers, whatever the needs may be today. Let people step out in, in faith and in boldness and seek your face. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. Let's worship God. Join me as we pray and you'll be dismissed. If you need prayer, please come. I'll stay to the last person today. Don't leave without giving yourself that opportunity. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you that we can worship you in spirit and in truth and in freedom. Jesus, we thank you that you came, that you, that you bled, that you died for us, that you give us that hope of eternal life, that even if death comes, we don't have to fear death because we know we're going to live forever with you. God, be with each and every one of us. Keep us safe as we travel to and fro, as people travel for Thanksgiving this week, God. Give us supernatural hedge of protection. Bless us to bless others. Help us to be the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ this week. Give us opportunities to help someone out there that may need some help. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You're dismissed.